Are you ready to scale your business in a way that's aligned with your soul and profitable? I'm Casey Rossi, a business and leadership coach. I've been a full-time entrepreneur for 30 years and love business. I help conscious leaders increase their impact and optimize their lives. Join me each week for tips and deep conversations on cultivating confidence, increasing your visibility, elevating your vibration, and leading with purpose without burning out. Let's go. You know that I love to keep you in the loop on anything that enhances performance. I've been taking an awesome productivity drink called Magic Mind, and I will give you the full scoop in just a bit. My guest today is Isaline Rosier. She is a former corporate project manager turned into a time management and success coach. She has learned how to transform her life from a draining corporate nine to five to building a meaningful nomadic business that is helping purpose-driven professional women gain clarity and master their time and productivity so they can reach their goals. I love my time with Isaline because you can tell that she is just so dedicated to helping women dissolve any mindset blocks that's getting in the way of helping them truly create a schedule, but moreover, a life and a business that they love. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Yasleen, welcome to the show. Hello, Casey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's so awesome to see you. Um, I know that we connected last year for your Get More Done Summit, and it was awesome. So I'm really thrilled to have you on the show today. And I'd like to first jump in. And I know that you really have the time management piece down. You help people achieve success through understanding their time. And I'm wondering what is the key mindset block when women say, I don't have time to, and then fill in the blank. It could be to prepare healthy meals. It could be to, you know, take my business to the next level. It could be networking. I'm just wondering from your professional point of view, what is the mindset block that keeps them from thinking that way? I think it's something that is coming up from our early age where, you know, like uh, we are all the time doing something. So we have plenty of stuff to do since our young age. Oh, you need to do that. You need to do that. You need to go there. You need to uh, do your homework. And the fact is like, we are all the time, you know, doing, 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 doing. And we are used to do all the time. So when it's come to, we have a lot of things to do. And when we don't succeed to do all the things that we want to do, we're like, okay, I don't have the time. But I mean, the reality is like, it's not that you don't have the time because we all have 24 hours during our days. We cannot extend that, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. <laughs> and, and the fact is like, you are choosing how you spend your time. And the fact is like, since we are young, we are kind of driven of like, you need to do that, you need to do that, you need to do that. So you are not really choosing where you are spending your time. So when you are growing up, your biggest job is to say, okay, so I have plenty of stuff to do, like everyone. So what are my priority? What do I want to do with my time? Because the fact is like a lot of people tend to, you know, have a time sucker in their life, mm -hmm. uh, the, have people ar uh, around them uh, asking for help all the time. But the reality is like, you need to be mindful with your time and you need to choose carefully what do you want to do with your 24 hours every day. Yeah, absolutely. Do you recommend that people do a little audit of their day and kind of see where those time suckers, as you said, uh, exist? Oh, yeah, of course. That's, I will say that's the step number one that you need to do, whether you're running a business, whether you're an employee, but every time that you say, oh, I don't have the time, you need to understand, okay, so why am I saying that? Where, where is this thought coming from? Why do I have the feeling that I'm not accomplishing everything that I want to accomplish. And the fact is like, what I, uh, I'm telling my client is to use like a time tracker. So for like one week or two weeks, if your weeks are really different from one to, uh, one to another, track every day what you are doing. Because mm -hmm. the first key in order to know where you spend your time is awareness. So yeah. 
who is taking your time? What is taking your time? Because if you don't know that, like it's like everything. If you don't know what is the root cause of the problem, of the problem, how can how can you solve it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And many times when we're trying to become more efficient or be better with our time, I feel like there's a little bit of a resistance because these are habits that are needed. And a lot of times habits are unsexy, right? So I'm really curious, where do you find your ideal client, whether it is a specific type of person or do they have to get to a certain stage before they're like, okay, I get it. I'm ready to put the work in. Just show me how. I mean, it's really different for everyone because like all the people who are coming to me, they reach a point where they say, okay, so I want to accomplish this goal. I want to do this in my life. I have been trying to do it for a month and for a month I have been repeating, like you said, the same pattern, doing all the same thing all over again without changing what I'm doing and what I'm doing every day is not leading me where I want to go. And that's when my, actually my client realized, okay, so now I need someone to help me in order to get there because I have tried on my own or I have tried with like, you know, the help of the people around me and it didn't work. And I need this specific framework to get there. So it's really about understanding that, okay, right now, I don't have any more solution and I know, and I'm conscious that I cannot do it alone. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. And have you found since COVID that people are even more distracted or they have a harder time staying focused or they're just, there's a, a, to me, it feels like an easier rationalization to say, oh, let me just jump on X and check that out. Or let me just go in, you know, look at this product that I just saw on this YouTube video. And it was a new makeup item that looks super fun. Like it feels like we're looking for an outlet. I mean, I've experienced this myself when it's I'm just curious what you have seen with your clients. Has it gotten increasingly difficult because our world is more chaotic? I will say that, again, it's depending on the type of people that you are. Some people, when they are going to work every day, they love it. And actually, when they were doing that, they were actually busy all day. So they were not thinking about like, oh, I need to get on my phone or I'm going to check this email or I'm going to do that. Why, when you are, when these people had to go back home because they didn't have the choice uh, because of COVID, they were like, they were, they actually face their house. And your house is the biggest place for distraction. You have TV, you have a tablet, you have computers, you have your phone, you have everything that you want in order to distract yourself. And the fact is like some, some people are not good are focusing when they are like in this type of environment because they tend to let themselves distracted more, uh, which when you are at work, you know, your environment is different. You don't have all this temptation around you to say, okay, so I'm going to be into a bit like to do one Netflix episode right now. No, you are at work. You are not going to do that. When you are at home, the word of possibility is open <laughs> so to yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, that's so true. <laughs> so, so, so you need to ask yourself and you need to have the mindset to say, okay, right now I'm going to focus on this and this and without distraction. And that's a choice. And that's also a mindset. And unfortunately, not everyone has this mindset to say, okay, so right now, I'm not going to go on YouTube, but instead of that, I'm going to focus for one or two hours. But I mean, that's something that is really hard. That's not something that we we are used to do because like most of the distraction around us, like they are made for us to spend hours and hours on them. You've got that right. Absolutely. And I feel like I've said this before, but the smarter the marketers get, the more psychological data that they harness on the social media platforms. It's kind of like the formula for Lay's where you just can't eat one. I mean, it's almost like that same kind of philosophy is happening in the social media channels that they're studying how to hijack our time because time now is our biggest commodity. So it really does take mindset and takes discipline. It takes repetitive habits like you're talking about for sure. And one of the things that I'm thinking about is 
you know, we spend a lot of time as high achievers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs focused on productivity, which is fabulous. We have to be productive and, you know, really mindful about our time management and all of those things. But I'm also really curious what you do personally, and if you integrate how to just be for your clients, do you help them understand how to just be? Of course, this is one of the key because, as I said, when you are at home, you you are facing yourself. So when before, when you were in your company with your colleague, you know you can. It was just easy to put aside all of your problems, all that you like didn't had the time to do. But when you are at home with yourself, you're like, okay, so this is the one thing that I need to do, and you are actually fi- facing. You, yourself so which means that you are facing the steps that you are procrastinating on you are facing you are facing the steps that you don't want to do it and there is no one behind you telling you okay now the, you need to do that like th- this is really really urgent so when it's come to to uh, actually do the stuff stop procrastinating you need also to be. And I know that a lot of people, as you said, they think that, oh, if I'm taking one hour for myself, that's bad. I didn't do anything for one hour. And after they are actually beating themselves up because they didn't do anything. But the reality is like, we cannot be productive 100% of the time. And I mean, we're not wired to be productive 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. And the fact is like, you will realize if you are taking more time for yourself where you are actually disconnecting from everything, not just spending one hour on YouTube, (laughs) (laughs) you will realize that this time is the time where your brain is going to get the the most creative. That's where you are going to have your best idea. So when you are relaxing, when you are taking care of yourself, when you are spending time with your kids, that's what is going to be like a game changer for you. Because I mean, let's face it, hustling is not a way of life. It is absolutely not. And I, I love that you underscored that we cannot be productive 100% of the time. It has to be a rhythm and a flow, just like we breathe, we inhale and we exhale, and there's a rhythm to that process. So I feel like when we treat ourselves like robots and in the early part of my career, I did that. If there was white space on the calendar, I would fill it in. And there would be anxiety if there was too much white space, because it there's those old patterns, right? Like that you talked about early on from childhood. So I think just acknowledging and, and also relishing in those juicy moments when we're resting, when we're driving, when we're playing with our kid, where we get this new idea for a blog post or a summit or fill in the blank that really you couldn't have done sitting there trying to grind it out. It just kind of bubbled up because you allowed yourself that, that period of time to rest and space. So I'm a fan of that philosophy as well. I'm very curious what your thoughts are. Do you think that this concept of the work-life balance, which we hear and we're hearing more of over and over again, it's almost become a little bit trendy. Do you think it's a farce? I mean, I don't, I don't know if there is really a balance. I think like, you know, because like the fact of the balance is like when you are putting something on the left, you are removing something from the right. So, you know, you need to, every time you need to take from one side to another. And for me, I mean, our life is not really balanced. We are just choosing to, to where we are spending our time and what we want or, you know, her equilibrium to be. So, mm-hmm. which means that for some people, they are going to be really happy maybe to work like seven hours a day. Some people, they will prefer maybe to work three hours a day and do something else. It really depends on yourself and what it what, what is the kind of life that you want to, to live? How do you want to spend your every day? Because as long as you are uh, building like a schedule where you are doing your work, where you are happy in your personal life, I mean, that, that's all good. I mean, you don't have to remove like something from your life in order to, you know, to find the right balance. Because I think everyone as a balance, but everyone has his own imperfect balance. So you just need to find what is, what is yours and, you know, stop, stop trying to find, you know, like 
um, is this ideal life. You know, like I know a lot of people online are advertising, yeah, I'm living here, I'm doing that, my life is amazing. And especially, you know, on Instagram, where when you are looking at these people, you say, oh, they have an amazing life and my life is really crappy. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just build the life that you want. I mean, your life doesn't have to be the same as everyone else, as long as you feel good about it. So you need to deal with your time as you want to deal with it. I wanted to share a product that I came across that is going to be right up your alley as fellow high achieving entrepreneurs and creatives. It's called Magic Mind, and it's the world's first productivity drink. If you've been in my world for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of anything that gives us a competitive advantage. And you know that I'm all about maximizing and optimizing. So why not get the benefit of 12 powerful ingredients in one shot? Active players like matcha, which helps keep you focused, adaptogens, which decreases stress, nootropics, which improves cognition, and other immune supports like turmeric and echinacea. I've noticed a clearer mind, so think less brain fog, and more motivation since I've started using it. Plus, the little two-ounce bottle says stress less, do more, which is the perfect mindset reminder to kickstart my day. I know if you're like me, you're thirsty for an elixir that can get you into flow state on the daily. Head on over to magicmind.co slash brilliance to learn more. That's M-A-G-I-C-M-I-N-D dot C-O slash brilliance to learn more. As a bonus to my listeners, my friends at Magic Mind are offering 20% off your first order. Remember to use Brilliance20 at checkout. Enjoy. Absolutely. Such a good point. And I can see where the confusion is because I think it was Jim Rohn that said success leaves clues. So if you have entrepreneurs that are looking to up level and scale, then naturally they're going to be looking at other people in their environment that have maybe cracked the code. And and to your point of the Instagram reel, you know, where we're checking other people out and seeing what they're doing and how are they living the nomadic life and the laptop, laptop lifestyle and all of those good things, I can see where it would be absolutely confusing. So for example, here's a huge contrast. I'm really interested in your point of view on it. So you have like Tim Ferriss and he wrote the book on the, the four hour mm-hmm. work week. So you have this concept that, you know, and and you see this too over and over again, which I actually think it can be damaging where the message out there is um, if you're working too hard or if you're grinding, you're not in alignment. You're not in like your own spiritual essence. You don't have flow or you're putting out the wrong message to the universe and there's like a block in the channel. So there's this side of the coin of philosophy. And then on the other side, you have something that's far the extreme, which is say Gary V, who in his own words works as fast as hell, 18 hours a day. And that type of mindset is you can sleep when you're dead. If you really want success, you have to just keep showing up, putting in hard, hard effort, and um, again, not really leaving that time and space to just be. So talk to me a little bit about that, because I'm sure listeners are like, wait a second, like, yes, it's a personal thing on who to subscribe to, but it is all over the board out there. Yeah, and I think it's, it's all depend, and you said it, on the pace that you want to reach your goal. I mean, Gary Vee, he wants to do like everything that he can do in his lifetime. So for him, like a second, like if he's losing a second, that's a big, big, big fail. While on the other side, you have Tim Ferriss who is uh, advertising a life where, okay, that's good to work, but that's also amazing to enjoy because our life is short. And I mean, like you can just die tomorrow, like uh, just at the crossroad, you know, like you can be (laughs) hit by a car and and that's it. So you need to enjoy every day in order to enjoy your life. And I think it all comes comes down to, okay, you have have goals that you have a plenty of projects that you want to achieve in your life. But what is the pace that you want to accomplish them? Do you want them to get done, to be done like in a year? Do you want them to get done like maybe in five years, in 10 years? What do you want to do? Because the side of your goal and the work that you need in order to reach them will actually um, uh, set your day-to-day schedule. 
if mm. you want something to be achieved really quick, you are maybe going to work more and but you will be fine with that because you know why you are doing it. Why maybe there is something that you want like to achieve in two years, like let's say like build a house because there is a lot of, it's usually projects that are taking time. It's gonna take two, two years and it will impact less your day to day because you are not gonna do every day something in order to get there. But maybe you will do something about it like every week or every two weeks or whatever. So it really depends on you and what are you expecting from your life? Yeah. Yeah. I like that point of view a lot. That's awesome. So I do have a question because one of the things that I see coming up more and more is when the entrepreneur has something unexpected come up, you know, whether it is they themselves have COVID or I've seen higher anxiety come in or more um, like attention deficit disorder. Like I've seen more and more of these kind of conditions and circumstances, some unknown and unable to like even be proactive about. I'm wondering what advice you have for people that are trying to kind of juggle this. They are their CEO. They may or may not have a team. And all of a sudden there's like this new life thing that's come in and has shifted what was maybe in line for them for their productivity. What can they do? I mean, first you need to learn how to give you some grace. Because I have a lot, a lot of my clients are actually in the same position, you know, they have the perfect plan, we're working on the goals, they are taking action, and then something is like, it's coming on, and they just go like, <laughs> they are just thrown off, because they need to take care of it, whether it's their kid who is sick, and they need to go to the hospital, whether there is like a death in their family, or something else happening, and you need to revise everything, in your schedule and everything that you are doing during the day. But the fact is, is like, that's, that's life. And you, need, and you need to understand it. And you need to, to actually give you some grace for that because there are some events in your life that you won't be able to, to, you know, to, to master, to actually um, being able to control them. You won't have control over it. And the fact of not having control over it, that's also a good thing and a bad thing because sometimes it's not a good thing to control everything that is happening in your life because when you don't control everything, you are open to new opportunities, you are open to, uh, open to new things that can arise and that can lead you somewhere unexpected, but where you are going to love it. Yes. But, and so that's, that's my, first point, my first point. The second point is that that's just life and that will happen and what you do, and that's one of the key in order to master your time, is that you need to know how to replan and replan quickly. So which means that all the things that you have planned for this week, you know, you are not being able to do it. So what are you going to do is like, okay, you are going to assess everything that you cannot do and say, okay, so next week, how can I put the things that I didn't have the time this week to do to make it happen next week? Thinking about the most urgent tasks first, because there is always some tasks that are more urgent than the, than the other one. So I will say, really give you some grace. You are able to do it. So just take the time and just like take 10 minutes to say, okay, so how am I going to reschedule everything in my life for the next two weeks or for the next week? Yeah, that's so crucial. And I would love it if you could share, if someone struggles with allowing themselves grace, what can they do? And I'll just share with you that I had an associate, and this is why it's fresh in my mind, who got COVID a couple of weeks ago and was just so exhausted. And, you know, even despite having conversations of, you know, rescheduling and doing all the things that you talked about, pivoting and shifting and really, you know, just kind of like, recategorizing just the urgence and knowing that it's going to be okay and letting go of perfectionism and all of that. Um, she refused to do that and saw five clients a day because she has a full client roster and literally felt like she was at death's door and just kept gobbing on the makeup, 
putting on glasses to kind of hide that she was sick and just plowed through it. And so I don't think she's the only one. I think it does go back to mindset that you talked about in the beginning. And so what if someone is in that state where it's like all this responsibility is on me? I have people waiting for me. There's expectations to fill. There's income that needs to be had. What's a baby step that they can take when it comes to self-grace? The thing that in this kind of situation, what you need to remind yourself is like, you are your best asset. So if you are not taking care of yourself, how how can you take care of your client? How can you take care of your family? How can you take care of all the people that need you? I mean, like having COVID, I know that some people are just undermining it, but that can be like something that a lot of people die from it. So that's something that where you should say, okay, so... In all the priority of the word, health is the first one. And that's how you you need to really uh, take a step back and say what is important. Because if tomorrow I'm sick and some people are sick for for years, for months, what am I going to do? It's it's even better to take like maybe like few weeks off for yourself. And don't worry, your client will understand it, especially during this pandemic where a lot of people lose a lot of people close from them. Then actually try to, to go through it like in pain because it must have been really hard for her to show up every day to be able to, to give advice. And the fact is like, you are not giving your client services. First of all, you are not showing them that you can actually, you are not setting the good example because yeah. when you are like, when you are not doing well, you, you, you are not giving them the best advice. You are not showing them that they can actually take time for themselves and that's okay. So that's the two things that you need to, to also to have in mind. How do I want to show up? What, I wa- what am I going to give my client? Because sometimes just saying, okay, so I need one week or two weeks to rest because I'm, I'm feeling really down. I'm not going to be at my best to help you. I don't see any client telling you, oh no, that's bad. Yeah. Don't, 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 <laughs> do, don't do that. Because it's actually inspiring. Cause like you talked about, they're modeling something that is, it's not just a trendy hashtag, you know I mean? It, it's, it's so vital. It's so very vital. So thank you for that. I didn't want to cut you off. Did you have more to say on that point? No, I mean, that's completely fine. But I mean, health should be the priority of everyone. And I know that some people are really stressed about like, yeah, I want to have income. I want to have income. But yeah, you need to realize that sometimes just saying the truth to your client is going to help you make more income than just hiding the truth and trying to keep on. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. How can people learn more about you and your world? I mean, there is plenty of way to learn about me. They can go on my website, isalinhosier.com. Uh, you can also find me on Pinterest, on Instagram. So I'm pretty much over uh, the internet. And also I have a, f- a free Facebook group where I have like uh, 900 people who are here to learn uh, how to master the time, to be more productive so they can level up uh, their business and uh, their life. So if you want to feel free to join, I will be more than happy to see you there. Oh, that's awesome, Isaline. I think that that's just fabulous. We need community more than ever right now to be with people that are willing to do the work and to stimulate deep conversations and have awareness. And then just like, keep showing up for themselves, show up for themselves, show up for their clients, show up for the community. So I love that. I'll make sure to put the links in the show notes. And if you were to leave our listeners with one last bright light piece of wisdom, what would it be? Be mindful about your time. And and actually use your time wisely because I mean, like a lot of people think time is something that, you know, is innate that we all have, but it's not because that's something that we'll all have that we know how to use it like uh, uh, properly. So if you are using your time properly, you will be able to do everything in the world that you want to do. Perfect. I love it. Isaline, thank you so very much. It's always a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you for hosting me today. It was really nice to be here. 
All right. Until next time, my friend, breathe joy. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and would love it if you could leave feedback at lovethepodcast.com slash brilliance. And a big thank you to Tommy E. W.C. from the U.S. who shares five stars. Fantastic. Wonderful podcast with inspiring guests. And Tommy, thank you so much for taking the time. I know I've said it before, but a couple of things. One, your feedback means the world to me. Two, I absolutely agree with you that the guests are inspiring and I just get so juiced up bringing you all different types of people from around the world that are just displaying bravery and courage by showing up, by saying yes to themselves and their business, and by committing to making the world a better place through entrepreneurialism. So I'm so thrilled that you're here. Thank you. And to you, my listener, know that you have everything with inside of you to do that as well. I'm sure you're already doing that in some way, shape, or form. And so just continue to commit to spreading that positive ripple effect and just be so confident that you are affecting more people than you even realize. Okay, my friend, until next week, breathe joy.